Hi, this is Karen from Oakland Stencil. In this video, I'll be showing you my tips on how to avoid bleeding when you paint using one of my stencils. I am the designer of all of the stencils here at Oakland Stencil, and I've made hundreds of signs using them. Over the years, I've tried different techniques and many different supplies, and I'll show you my favorite go-tos. If you have any questions, you can email me at oaklandstencil at gmail.com, or if you're an Etsy customer, you can always just send me a message through Etsy at my Oakland Stencil Etsy shop. I get a lot of emails with questions from customers on how to use the stencil that they purchased. Or they want to purchase a stencil but don't really know how to use it or even that they've already used one of the stencils and there's a lot of bleeding under it and they don't know what they're doing wrong. So I'll try to answer those questions in this video. I'll go over the supplies that I use, measuring and placing the stencil onto your wood board, then of course painting with the stencil, drying time, and then when it's finished, pulling up the stencil and then deciding if you're going to fill in those bridges or not. First things first, let's get your supplies together. You'll need a prepped wood board, stencil, the paint that you're going to be painting with, brushes, tape, a paint palette or a paper plate, some paper towels. A couple of optional items would be a pencil, scissors, blow dryer to speed up that drying time if you want to, and a ruler. Depending on the stencil and the design, you'll want the design itself centered on, on your board, or at least close. If the stencil plastic is bigger than your board and hangs off, you can always just cut a couple of notches out of the plastic so you have a place to tape the stencil to the board so then it keeps it from moving while you're painting. Place the stencil on the board and figure out what looks best. I measure it with a ruler, but you really don't have to. You can just eyeball it. If you do have a ruler, use it and make sure that it's centered the best you can. Then tape the stencil in place. You can do just the sides or top, bottom, and both sides, whatever you feel comfortable with. Set up your space so you can easily reach your paint, paper towels, brushes, etc., whatever you may need. Then, I always shake my paint first. Put the paint into your paint palette. I'm gonna use gray for the hello and then um, the Sunny Day Yellow by Apple Barrel. Let's see, I guess I can show you. Pewter Gray, Apple Barrel, and Yellow for the word Sunshine. Ooh, wrong brush. So you load your brush with the paint. I always try and get a little bit extra paint and then I dab it into one of the empty spots in the paint palette or if you don't have a paint palette and you have just paint on your paper plate just dab it to the side and then do it on your paper towel so I always load my brush get a lot of the paint off in an empty space and then do it on the paper towel. Then start painting. I use a dabbing technique. Looks like I need a little bit more paint on this, but my brush has the lightest, lightest amount of paint on it. The more paint on your brush, the more likely you'll have paint pushed under the stencil and then that's where the bleeding happens. So most often when there is paint bleeding under your stencil is because you just have too much paint on your brush to begin with. So see it's just a light coat of paint. You'll still see the white underneath on your board, your white board, you know, through the gray paint. Be careful not to get gray or if you're doing two colors, not to get colors into your next word or whatever you're doing, design. And there is your first letter. 
Now I said that optional would be a pencil. Sometimes when you have an intricately designed stencil and a lot of little letters or words or whatever it may be, I sometimes hold the pencil or hold the plastic down with the pencil like that and then I will go in and dab around it and it kind of holds the stencil in place so it, there's no lifting. And that's another thing is that I always hold my stencil while I paint. So there's that. Then I'll do the sunshine. I'll switch brushes. Normally I'll rinse this brush and just keep using that, but just for time's sake, I'll just use this bigger brush. I like the smaller brushes because I think that they don't hold as much paint, so then you're you know, not as likely to get bleeding, but. Okay, so there's the first coat of paint on each, for each color. And I will go back and do a second coat on both and then we'll um, take a look at it and see if we need to do any do a third coat. Hopefully we won't, but this is pretty quick and it seems like it's drying pretty quickly too. Once you're done with the second coat, take a look at your paint. If you don't see any white underneath it and it seems like it's dark enough for you, then you're done. If you do have like little spots you kind of want to fill in, do a third coat, but to me, I think that this one looks great, so we might as well just pull it up. I always pull up the stencil right away. I think if you leave the stencil on, then sometimes the paint dries underneath the stencil and it'll stick to it. So as soon as I'm done painting, I pull up the stencil. So let's do it, see how this goes. See how it sticks a little bit to it. And there you go. Hello, sunshine. So look over your finished sign. Here's where you can decide if you want to fill in the bridges or not. You can use a liner brush, or I actually have a Princeton Snap size zero. This is just a small brush. And you would just fill in here, here. I would maybe just do the tops, like here, here. The L's, maybe here, here. Or you don't even have to if you don't want to. So that's it. Your sign is finished. If you have any questions, you can email me at oaklandstencil at gmail.com. Or if you're an Etsy customer, you can always just send me a message through Etsy at my Oakland Stencil Etsy shop.